you were standing before God's throne in heaven, and God asks you, why should I let you into heaven? What answer would you give him? Ah, Judgment Day. What an important day to consider. Hebrews 9.27 states that it is appointed unto men once to die, and after that, the judgment. So what if you answered, I'm a good person. I've done a lot of good things. I care for people. I haven't done anything really, you know, that bad, or at least not as bad as some of the other people who have roamed this planet. I think I'm a good person overall. You have to ask yourself the question, what is the root problem of humanity? Well, Scripture states that the root problem of humanity is sin. Romans 3.23 states that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So what if you have a bleeding artery? What do you do? Do you rush out to find someone who's already provided a good solution to the problem? Yes, of course. You go stop the bleeding immediately, uh, first and foremost, but you got to find someone who either knows what they're doing or find an ER, just someone with expertise who's already provided a solution to the problem. What would happen if you had a bleeding artery and all you did was put a band-aid over it? Would that solve the problem? Doing good works alone is that band-aid. It's simply a cover-up for a deeper issue, much deeper issue, that really needs a solution. And we've disobeyed God. We're guilty before God. We've disobeyed His commands. We've missed the mark. We haven't obeyed God in full. We haven't loved Him with our whole heart and everything. We haven't loved our neighbor as ourselves. But thankfully, God has provided a solution. And that's through the work of Jesus Christ. God truly is the ER that we need to fix our bleeding artery. And though our problem of sin is as a bleeding artery, we need urgent help. God has provided Jesus Christ as a sacrifice for our sins. And while, yes, Jesus did command us to do good things, Matthew 22, 37 to 39, he commands us to love our neighbor as ourself, but he also first and foremost commanded us to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Really, our whole being needs to be in love with God. Even more, 1 John 3, 23 states that not only are we to love one another, which is the second part of the verse, but first, God's command was for us to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ. The whole question is theoretical, as you may well know. As Revelation makes clear, we either will or will not be in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, for all we know, for all intents and purposes, we may, in awe of God's majesty, Sam before his throne speechless. We may not even be able to answer anything. Needless to say, stand before God. We may just fall on our knees before him. Uh, Philippians 2, 9 and 10 states that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. But what feeling will you have when that happens? Will you have regret in your heart? Will you have your good works but nothing to answer for on Judgment Day? Will you have rage in your heart? You know, do you, do you hate God? Do you hate His creation? That's another response. Or will you willingly and gladly and joyfully know that you have committed your life to Jesus Christ, that you've accepted Him as your Lord and Savior, and that truly you know that He is Lord, that He is Master, is what that word really means, and that you know that you'll have an eternity with God in heaven. So, yes, do good deeds, but don't expect them to get you through Judgment Day. John the Baptist and Jesus both preached, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. In order to stand before God in righteousness, you must repent of your sins and believe on Jesus Christ for salvation. Regardless of how much or how little we've sinned, we're still guilty before God. We've sinned. We've disobeyed Him. It's only through Jesus that we can enter into heaven. When Thomas asked, when we leave Jesus, how are we going to know the way? Jesus replied, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. So when you stand before God, be ready. And if you aren't ready, you need to take some time right now and get your heart right before God. You need to repent of your sins. You can pray your own words, but pray something like, Father, forgive me of my sins. Simple as that. You know, God knows the words we're going to pray even before we pray them. Also accept Jesus' work on the cross for you, his death and his resurrection for you. Just pray something to the effect of, Lord, I accept your sacrifice, I accept your gift of salvation. 
I renounce my ways and I follow you. You are the way, the truth, and the life. It's something simple, nothing too fancy again. So, but, but finally, commit your life to the Lord. He laid down his life for us, so let's lay down our life for him. Let's follow him. Something to the effect of, Lord, I give my life to you. I accept your way. I want to follow you. I give up my own futile way. And, and pray in Jesus' name, amen. And upon doing so, your sins are forgiven, your slate is clean. 2 Corinthians 5.17 states that in Christ you are a new creation. All old things are passed away. All things have become new. And there's much to say about living the Christian life. It's not an easy thing. It doesn't make your life magically better or easier. I think it actually makes it harder. It talks a lot about suffering in Scripture, too. So not only are we entitled to believe on Christ, but also to suffer for his sake. But, Lord willing, there will be more time to discuss more specifics in future videos. So for now, God bless you, walk in newness of life, and amen.